Welcome everyone to today's episode of the Heroic Council. Tim, can you cue us up with our intro? Of course. This podcast is part of the Shareable Podcast Network. Learn more at shareable.fm. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So today we are joined by Catherine Bright, Cat from Cat Fit Studios. And I want you to go ahead and please introduce yourself because we're going to be talking all about fitness and getting healthy this post pandemic period that we're in. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm Kat. And um, so I, um, I'm in the fitness industry. My business is CatFit, and I work with busy women, 35 and over, who are really pursuing a career, starting a family, and just juggling it all, handling everything and tackling it all, and helping them find solutions that are effective and efficient for them to have um, resiliency with their fitness and find ways that they can have um, confidence in their bodies and live in an action-ready body. Um, and I kind of have found that passion through my own walk through fitness and being a mom and being a um, you know, former uh, college track and field coach and understanding how great it is and why you should move your body with purpose. And it it's, goes deeper than just muscles. And um, yeah, um, and I do a lot of running, which is helps my clarity and stress reduction with my kids. <laughs> so. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. We all we all need that this time of, this time of year for sure. It's nice out and able to get out and run a little bit. So I I know I'll speak for myself, and I think a lot of people are kind of coming out of this pandemic quarantine period we've been through and winter just feeling a little bit blah, like not so much ourselves. And so what can we be doing to help us really get back on track after all this? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, one of the things is, yeah, we all feel blah. Even if you've been working out consistently through it, it it's just, you know, I, I find myself saying to my kids all the time, right now we have to embrace the suck. And I take it a little step further with them. I'm like, we have transitioned so much and adapted and haven't had time to take a break and catch a breath. So with that, I tell them, I'm like, sit with the blah, sit with the, the tiredness and understand what motivates you to kind of move or what is frustrating you. What is that pain point that is just doesn't feel good. And then when you assess that, look at what do you want to do to get out of that? What are things that might help you? Maybe it's talking over with a friend. Maybe it is hiring a trainer to manage it. Maybe you need delegation. Maybe you need to do less. And we often discredit doing less. And especially mm -hmm. with a lot of my clients right now, I'm having them do less and they're seeing more benefits because we have just been overworking and looking at trying to fire on all cylinders and more with, you know, juggling distance education, uh, juggling, juggling, uh, juggling, excuse me, a career while helping our kids feel the unknown as well as we're trying to feel the unknown um, and then everything trying to change. And so just decompress with that and then look at what you decide is your goal is it going to align with your fitness or sorry, not your fitness, your current lifestyle right now? And can you work up to that or what, how many steps do you need in order to be able to obtain that goal? Cause we all want it yesterday. We all want to feel better. Like, you know, in that next second, but it takes time and we have to be okay with slow. That doesn't mean we're failing, but we have mm -hmm. to be okay with, moving slow to allow ourselves to have that awareness as to why things feel blah, why things don't feel right. And then with that, you'll learn how to transition out of that blah feeling faster. That's that's fascinating because I think we also, we get so, we see an infomercial, right? We see a commercial, we see a get slim quick kind of a scheme and you feel like, oh, you want that, but you mm -hmm. must have to work so hard and have really sore muscles to achieve that. So I like what you're saying so much. Can you speak a little bit more about how can we slow down to actually do more? And, and what does that mean? Does that mean less reps, less days working out? You know, how does that look for your clients? Yeah, absolutely. So it does look different for every person. Uh, so, but the, the main thing is looking at when you start to feel that, that strife of, I feel like I'm failing, I'm not making any, any progress in my fitness, I have to do more, you know, just that 
unsettledness, um, even feeling more of that blah feeling, that uh, potential mistrust with yourself where you're just like, well, I only went to the gym three times this week. I should be doing it six times. Start to be like, why Why do you need to do it six times? You can find mm -hmm. fitness success in three times a week. You can find fitness success in a 30 minute workout three times a week, 10 minutes. Maybe you get into the workout. Maybe you are working out six times a week, but you're finding you're really upset. You're drained. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you are obtaining your goals, but you feel exhausted. It's not bringing you joy, but you have to sit with that and understand. So maybe it's a reevaluation of goals. So look at, you know, this is where I say, you know, make, making sure it's aligned with your lifestyle. Um, I have a client who I know she can work out six, seven days a week, but right now her lifestyle does not accommodate that. Mm -hmm. And so I had to readjust all of her workouts and say, right now it's 10 minutes, four times a week. It's going to be mm -hmm. effective. It's going to get what you need. And you know you can do it six times a week, seven times, or whatever you need in that. But for right now, in order to keep you consistent, this is where we need to be. And it's tying in and addressing where you're at in your life. Because fitness, we always think it's linear, okay? I have a decided goal. This is my starting point is point A. And then it's going to take me right to point B. But we forget that nothing is linear. It's very just all over. We're just going back and forth all over. We learn, we fall, we stand up. It just... So that's where it's like denouncing that point A to point B, established goal, and that's going to take me to my result. That doesn't happen. So if we become flexible and understand that looking at the consistent re, um, habits that we can instill, then you're going to be able to adjust, adapt with your lifestyle, and then stop that, okay, I've worked out for six days a week. For the first two weeks, I'm tired. A work project comes up illnesses, you know, come up, yeah. and vacations, you know, and then you don't work out for three months because you have to figure out how to realign everything in this intricately, you know, intense plan that isn't working for your lifestyle. Um, and so once you find what really works with your lifestyle, then you'll be able to, you know, I would say, think of dials, turn it up a little bit more here, turn it down a little bit more here. And be more fluid and flexible with yourself to allow yourself to be in control. And that's what I kind of joke. I'm like, I'm the master behind my client's fitness where I'm the one who manages it. I say, okay, okay, we're going to turn this down a little bit here. It's not that you can't handle it. It's right now. This is what it need, you need because you can't fire on, you know, at top 10 with life um, and life, you know, family, social obligations, your own personal well-being, nutrition, fitness, job, etc. all at a 10. You cannot do that. You can for a little bit of time, but you're going to burn out real quick. Yeah, that that's really sound advice. I think that serves in so many areas of life and business, certainly. Um, and Jack, thanks for your comment. Quality and consistency over quantity, for sure. Mm -hmm. I am definitely guilty of thinking like, well, I have to do this. I have to do it. Even if my muscles are sore and I'm really tired, I'm pushing myself. So, you know, it sounds like you're saying it's okay possibly to take that break. And what can we do when our when our muscles are just really sore and we feel like we should push ourselves, but maybe, maybe you're suggesting that we don't have to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things in being a former um, college athlete, and it's tough to it's tough to rest. And one of the things I had to learn was in recovery comes growth. And the reason why we all sleep at night is because that's where we're recovering, that's where we're growing. But we, you know, as we grow up, you know, we can stay up later. So, you know, we cut into a lot of our sleep time and we, and we don't put a lot of emphasis on rest and recovery. And that is huge. And if you're not, you know, taking an active rest day off of the gym, meaning go out for a nice walk, um, play tag in the yard with the kids, um, that is still movement. That is still a workout. It's still recovery. Garden, gardening is is a nice workout. Um, and it's also a nice distressor. It, it gets your mind out, you're free, go for a uh, hike in nature, that's a day off. You don't have to be immobile on the couch, you know, doing a Netflix marathon. But those are things that can ease and work the body and allow for decompression with the mind. Also, get to bed or take a nap. Um, I'm the worst napper. I don't like naps. But taking a nap sometimes when you're tired is really, really good. It allows the body and you're going to see more benefits. You're going to find your muscles aren't going to be as sore. Um, and you'll be able to push a little harder in the gym when you can get there. Yeah, that that's really that's really sound advice. And I think it doesn't have to be that we're having a sweat fest and we're breathing really heavy to say we worked out. But 
like taking the dog for a walk, going for a more casual hike can count as fitness. So I think that that's, that's really cool. Um, as you know, business owners, which the, most people that listen to the, to the podcast are, you know, how, how and why should we be focusing on our own health and really our employees health as well? It's a, it's a great question. I mean, this last year, if anything, we've been under immense stress and we've had to adapt. And with that, you know, everyone's life has been altered. And now that we're coming out, we haven't had a moment to process or just be like, whew, let me catch my breath. <laughs> yeah. And now that we're coming out, I mean, one of the phrases I was joking with a, another colleague of mine, I was like, I hate this. Now we're going back to work. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't think anyone's had a 12 month vacation. <laughs> so I think we've all been working <laughs> in some fashion or another. So it's now let's let's look at our employees and ourselves and find the ways that we can give back in the sense of decompression, rest and recovery, because we've all been stressed. And we haven't been able to handle that. Some, you know, we've had to battle other things. Some we're still working on, especially with kids. I know my kids are, are still trying to process going from. 100% virtual to two days to four days to five days and now we're th being thrown into summer break, you know um, So it's let's look at hey when we need to rest Let's look at encouraging our employees to get away from the computer screen I can't tell you how many of my clients are 8 a.m. To 6 p.m. 7 p.m. Locked and loaded right there on the screen calls this encourage them get out encourage them to eat away from their desk Get outside, feel the sun on the face, the birds chirping, yeah. um, and then establish healthy boundaries between buffer and work, whether especially if you're working from home, because there's no commute, there's no transition for the individual. You, you know, I always joke with my clients that it's just a door, or maybe you don't have a door in your office um, that people will just, you know, can come in and can access, but you need to find that transitional moment and why it's so important for you that you can take that moment, even if it is in your office, just kind of push back from the desk and just zen out, you know, maybe do a quick meditation. For some of my clients, I'm like, if that's your only time in your buffer to get a workout in, throw your bands, weights in your office and get that 10 minute workout before you open that door and you're thrusted into family life and whatever those demands are. Mm, that's a that's a really good tip. Um, Tim, did you have a question? Yeah, so um, this is totally not me. I'm just asking for a friend. Uh, <laughs> let's say hypothetically you had a really solid routine prior to COVID um, and then and like uh, and you know for like several years in a row, COVID came, totally smashed that and uh, and psychologically it was hard to like transition into like something that was doable in the house or whatever. And now you saw like all that all that great work you did kind of like dissolve and you're kind of like back at square one, how would you help somebody frame that into like turning that around into something like like that they don't feel totally horrible about and they can actually start making progress again? That's a really, really outstanding question and so many people are in that position. And first, the one thing I would say is my motto is, if you did it once, you can do it again. Um, so there's, that's just, there's no limitation on that. You can totally do it again. And what I would say is look back to the things that you loved about your previous routine, things that you liked with the workouts, the, you know, the fit, the feel, the comfort, the focus of it all, and just write it down. We don't think about, I hate to say journaling, but we don't think about physical movement and, and putting it into words and you know, pen to paper and sit with that. You know, too often we tend to sit with the, Oh, I stopped doing it. Oh, I failed. Oh, I let everything go. How could I do that? But look at, you know what? Again, I, I always say, say with my clients, I can't stress enough. We went through such a massive thing that no one else has ever dealt with, you know, in our lifetime. I think maybe there was one other person that dealt with, lived through the 1918 pandemic and now the, the 2020. So, but it's, it's one of those things where this is a first for everyone and it's okay to have let your fitness routine go. And but sit there and look at what were the attributes that you liked about it? What were the, the, the fit feelings, the, the, um, your focus during it? And then once you start to decode that, you know, set a little challenge, you know, um, take a habit, one habit that you liked, tie it with a current habit and reward yourself. And I tend to say, don't reward yourself with food. Not that food's bad. Food is great. I love food, you know, but like <laughs> take it as more of, you know, high five yourself. And it does motivate you. I do it myself. Um, and in front of people, they see me do it. So, um, you know, or, or develop that mantra and just take one obtainable um, 
step at a time and you're going to find yourself getting back to that we've all hit that in some way or another and speaking for myself i went through you know very very consistent fitness routine and running and training for our ultra marathon to a dead stop because my kids started you know online schooling from home i had to take in my sister's kids and i went from running over 150 miles a month and strength training three days a week to I ran four miles in one month because I couldn't get out. And I ha also have a gym in my house and I couldn't even get there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I had this massive imposter syndrome. I'm like, here I am. Mm -hmm. I run a business. I can't even work out. And then I took a step back. And I'm like, I, if, if I can't do this, how am I going to expect my clients to do this? And working through that and understanding that in life, there are going to be times where you can't work out but if we look at what we liked about those times when we were in our peak fitness and those you know the the focus we had the feelings we had during that and how we felt fit and we extrapolate from that that develops awareness and if you focus on those things that's the positiveness and you're going to start to work your way back faster and you know what i say kind of get rid of all that negative stuff you're going to not be in that flounder negative oh you know I, I should have done this i could have done more we all could have done more but we survived and that is yeah. huge so yeah yeah I, th I think that's really amazing too and i know you do a lot of work with moms who've you know just had babies and i think that's i love seeing that on your instagram too it seems like you're really focused on helping people find the things about their lives and their bodies that they can feel great about and celebrating mm -hmm some of those things. And so, you know, you spoke about it a little bit, but why is that so important, especially for new moms? Um, I really feel it, it's so important that we feel almost defeated in those senses where we know what we can do, but our body's not doing it the way we used to know in that feeling. And, you know, especially with pregnancy, your your entire body changes. It, it, you know 39 to 42 weeks um you know and when you especially with a first time pregnancy it it's bizarre i you know i remember going through it myself i was you know former athlete could put myself through crazy workouts and then when i did my first postpartum workout back i was like nothing is communicating i feel like i have 10 arms 10 legs and everything's going in different directions and knowing that okay if i could focus on finding the mind body connection of feeling how my body's moving knowing that it's okay not to you know it's okay to struggle it's okay not to be able to perform something it's okay to have modifications with workouts it's okay that you need to miss a workout and focus on why you enjoy working out because that is gonna keep you going more it's gonna keep you more consistent um, and keep you coming back. You know, that's a, I always say burpees. I hate burpees. Um, <laughs> if my clients don't like an exercise, I'm not going to put it in there. And oftentimes it is burpees because there's a many different ways to find workouts or work many different ways to work out your body and many different exercises that are going to attain really good results. So when I work with clients, I look at, okay, how are they moving? How is their body feeling? Does this exercise feel good in their body and maybe it's an exercise that they love but right now it's not feeling good so i put in an ad adapted workout adapted um, exercise so that they feel empowered they feel stronger and helping them be set up for success so they are like yes i can still get a workout in despite being up all night with the baby despite you know recovering from a, a c-section or delivery you know it just allows them to be more in control and if you're more in control and feeling confident in your workouts you're going to be more apt to come back to them yeah. hello i'm going to ask a question <laughs> um i this is such a good topic um because i've also taken more time to dedicate to being active and moving and um what I've noticed though, is that there's always, of course, that mental, we, you, you talked about sort of the mental um, trash that you have to like, deal with before getting to the workout. And then I'm finding also, once you show up to the workout, there's like another set of like mental uh, toughness that you need to have, right? So I'm curious, what are some of the things that you do to help, um, help, you know, even give someone another, another thought, like another positive thought about these things? Like, what are some of the things that um, are useful to say to yourself 
as you're getting ready to go work out and then once you're there and really getting through those tough moments like what are some things that are useful to keep in mind um that's a really really great question um one of the biggest things is i with my clients i have a 10 minute rule because we all feel tired and you know it's especially if you're working out at the end of the day or even in the morning morning workouts i mean <laughs> when my alarm clock goes off sometimes i'm i'm a bigger morning workout person. Um, but I'm just like, oh my God, I just want to stay in bed. <laughs> Especially in the winter going outside and running in the freezing cold. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but that's why I say the 10 minute rule. It's like, okay, I'm going to give it 10 minutes because the hardest part about working out in my humble opinion is starting, you know, knowing that there's so many things that we need to get done in a day that we look at workout as a distraction and not something that sets you up for a power uh, successful day. It, you know, and that's where if you get into the workout and you start moving and you just say, okay, I'm going to focus on each rep at a time, you know, have a good mobility session before, you know, two to three minute mobility session before you get into the workout, getting yourself there, just be like, okay, you know, maybe that last work call, just was so frustrating and now you have a, a big project due that you weren't or you have to go back to work after the kids go to bed or after dinner um just be like okay you know what i'm gonna get this this is gonna fuel my body this is the movement i need right now um and then start to get into the workout and there are times where yes after 10 minutes if you're just like oh my god moves just feel challenging nothing feels right i tell my clients i'm like just lay down close your eyes focus on your breath and stop the workout because that you know elite athletes have the same issues you know and there's no shame in walking away from a workout if you try because what you're doing there is listening to your body and what it really needs and then I've had some of the greatest workouts and some of my clients where they're mm -hmm. like I didn't want to work out but I got in there and I after 10 minutes you know whatever the duration workout was I had the best workout of my life it was amazing. I thought it was super tired where I would have just sat on the couch. I felt so good. <laughs> and that's because you allowed yourself to kind of decompress, put it away, push through the 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, you get into it. You get into the workout. The other thing to help, because it is tough to get ourselves moving, is boundaries. And boundaries aren't holding yourself to every morning at 6 a.m. I'm going to work out. No boundaries are establishing that you are saying i'm going to show up for myself today this is the way i'm going to show up for myself and this is how it's going to work towards my goal so oftentimes you know so that's kind of the framework of the boundary then putting it into action is if i don't get a work a morning in a, excuse me a workout in the morning because i needed the extra sleep i'll say at the breakfast table not that anyone needs to hold me accountable i'll say today i'm going to be working out by 2 p.m I'm going to go for a run and this, this, and this. And I've made that verbal commitment to myself. And I know either my, one of my boys are going to ask or my husband is going to ask, hey, how was your run today? Or how was your workout? You know, and it's not for the shame aspect if I don't do it. It's I'm committing to showing up for myself. And that sometimes I'll give a window because our days can be uncontrollable. It's like I'm going to show up for myself between 11 to 2. And I write it in my planner and I have a note and then I get it done. Um, because I know that's important to me because it sets me up for success and movement, you know, and especially I always tell my clients, I'm like, when you're sitting there and you're in a problem, like a, working and you're just falling flat and things are getting harder, I'm like, get up and move. And then you're going to come back and be like, oh, this is easy. I got it. And just keep going. So look at it as how is this going to inspire you? How is it going to um help you work towards your goal and keep an open mind that you can be flexible with your workout too and change it midstream if need be yeah and i yeah. found it's been really good to be around other people that's mm -hmm. like the thing for me it's like when other people are involved i guess it's my personality type is that i then tend to show up more for other people so because i know that for myself i kind of use it to my advantage to hey i showed up for these people and hey for me too i'm going to stay here and keep working out so that's always a really big plus and i was going to uh, also drop another idea for people who are maybe interested in getting out and doing something you should definitely check out pickleball it is like such a fun sport i don't know if you've uh, heard of that but are there other things that you encourage people to do like even to be you know social when you can 
um, with fitness? Absolutely, yeah. Um, walking and talking on the phone. Um, you know, get out, walk, talk on the phone. If you have a friend that walks, um, walking is the most underrated form of cardio. Um, mm. It is just, it gets bashed and I, will fully admit I used to bash it. I was like, what, what are you walking? You're not doing anything. Like, but no, walking is huge. Um, you know, um, get out, walk, get out, walk in nature, find a great trail. There's, um, you know, a lot of nature preserves. Um, the other thing for connection is, um, you know, have play dates with, you know, with your friends, you know, mom and dad friends, play tag with the kids, get in there, play wiffle ball. Wiffle ball is really fun. Um, <laughs> you know, get out, you know, have just a, a friendly game, you know, and just, you know, especially if, if you have a lot of friends with kids and you have kids yourself, become a kid again. There's no rule book that says you turn a certain age or you have a child, you can't be a kid again. And, you know, get out there and move. There's so many things. I mean, playgrounds are really challenging and it's a great workout to be on the playground equipment. <laughs> so yeah, just get out, be social, have fun, laugh, you know, whatever is going to bring you joy and connect with other people, I think is great. You know, if it's, if there's someone who you want to connect with, that's why I say talking on the phone and they're miles apart and you can't get together, you know, do that or do a Zoom workout with a friend. Um, if they're, you know, many miles in between or you guys can't, get to the gym together or, or whatnot. So. Yeah, I, I have to say my sister's boss, um, she works at a cool company and they, the boss said, listen, we don't have to see each other when we're on Zoom. We have to have these status check-in meetings. So everybody feel free if you want to, let's go for a walk together. We'll be on the call, but we can at least move during this meeting. And I was like, that's a really cool, innovative way to, to think about it. And I tried to, you know, when my mom calls, actually she lives in Chicago and I try to, you know, grab the dog and go out for a walk when she calls because it's gonna be a 30, 45 minute conversation likely. And it's just a great way for I could sit and talk to her or I could walk. And so I think that's just like find those windows of opportunity where you can get some fitness in where you're not typically thinking about it. And that's a that's a great tip there. Um, what other trends are you seeing in fitness right now? So like we went through, you know, the 80s and we had this different <laughs> workout routines and jazzercise and Zumba and bar. And so, you know, what are some of those trends that you're seeing in fitness mm -hmm. right now? And what should we be on the lookout for? Um, well, I mean, hit workouts are always going to be here to stay. Um, they're, they pack a punch in a short amount of time. Doesn't mean you should do them every single day, but they are effective. Um, the other thing is, um, streaming workouts, um, workouts that can be done in home or other areas versus going to a traditional gym. Um, those are things that are going to stay consistent, um, and be more up and coming. Um, it's, that's not going to go away with the pandemic. And it actually was here before the pandemic. I would say I've been virtually coaching clients since 2013, um, because it allows more versatility for the individual and more control for them to get a workout in on their own time. Um, but the next thing that we're really gonna see is programs that address stress management and reduction and understanding mm -hmm. how to de-stress with your life and what is kind of that energy sucking um, component of your life and how to manage that. Um, and like I said, develop that resiliency with your fitness and understanding that it's not a linear process. It's more of awareness and how to turn things up and down with it to remain consistent. That's cool. Yeah. So I use the beach body on demand and I also have Peloton. And so I do those workouts. And I think it's just been interesting over the years to see the addition of more yoga classes, more stretching, you know, not go take another class to stretch, but stretching is included at the end of this class. And here's some ways to reduce stress. So I think that's a, a really cool trend actually that I, I'm seeing start to happen because, you know, we need, we definitely, we definitely all need that. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the one thing that people miss is working out stresses the body and the body doesn't differentiate between stress. So if you're stressed from work, you're stressed from not sleeping and stressed from not having nutrient dense foods, and then you go work out, that's a lot of stress. It's not reducing the cortisol levels. Yes, you're getting the endorphins, but that doesn't mean don't work out. It means we need to look at, and that's why the mobility is working in there because it's a great way to not be as stressful on the body, but still find strength gains, ease those aches and pains that daily life bring to us um, and allow for the person to feel good. Because some of these workouts, they don't feel good. They make your body feel 
really cranky and, and that's okay but your body shouldn't always feel really cranky and should you shouldn't always be pouring in sweat um some clients i know with some of my work it's like i looked at this workout and i was like oh that, that'll be easy i finished it and i was like oh my goodness even though i didn't really i wasn't pouring out sweat i felt really good and exhausted but i wasn't sore for days i'm like that's good you shouldn't be sore for days after a workout <laughs> so yeah, I think, I think that's a really big challenge is like you do that hard work on then you can't walk up the stairs. <laughs> it's like that's or down the stairs is actually usually worse for me at least. Um, thinking about, you know, exercise versus nutrition, that's an ongoing sort of debate, you know, obviously, you know, which one matters more? Do we really do both? And I know you don't really like kale either, which I don't. <laughs> I saw no kale or burpees on your website. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that nutrition equation and how important it is to fuel our bodies, of course? Yeah, absolutely. It is an ongoing battle. And you see this, the percentages out there that nutrition is 80%, fit workout is 20%. Um, they go hand in hand. You can't have one or without the other, um, especially if you're looking for certain results. And I always say, if there's only one you can handle, choose the one that is going to be more attractive and, and, and one you feel more inspired to work on. So if it's fitness first, it's fitness first. If it's nutrition first, it's nutrition first. But you need both. Um, you can have a brilliant diet, a flawless diet, and still you need you need muscles you need muscle for balance you need muscle for coordination for for aging well and feeling good and movement um you know the the thing that helps put muscle and keep muscle on your body is you know under stress so weightlifting um you know moving the body walking etc um nutrition is a huge component of it because that also helps back up what the work you're doing in the gym. So you can't have one without the other. Um, you know, again, kind of that dial system with my clients, if they can only handle one thing that week, I'm like, okay, well, what's the easiest gonna be for you? If it's movement, okay, don't trash your diet, but we've worked on creating healthy habits for them to keep that in there, but we're gonna downplay the nutrition. We're not gonna work on a nutritional habit that week. We're gonna keep the focus on the fitness. Um, so that's where there's a harmonious marriage with them and a balance because when one needs a little um, <clears throat> support, the other supports it. Um, so it, that's why I argue they're equally important. Um, they both do great work, but you just can't be like, oh, I only work out. I don't care about my diet, I only work out, or I only work focus on my nutrition. You know, So it's, it really is a, a good partnership that they both need to be there. Perfect. And we have a question came in from, from one of our listeners, Jack, and he said, uh, what other support, if any, are you offering in the realm of nutrition and supplementation? Supplementation, that's a great question, Jack. We, we didn't touch on that yet. Um, so in nutrition, I work with my clients on understanding how to, to eat from a family basis. So I always say you should never be a short order cook to anyone. Um, when you focus on your nutrition, it should be for the whole family or whoever is under the roof and going to be dining with you on the same entree. Um, because there's no bad food out there. All food is good. There's a little less not nutrient dense food and more nutrient dense food. Um, and looking at how do we, um, you know, what foods do we enjoy? That's why I say kale. Kale is not the holy grail of fitness or a holy grail to um, health. It, it just isn't. You don't have to eat kale in order to be fit or, you know, reach your nutritional goals. There's so many amazing fruits and vegetables out there and whole grains that there's infinite possibilities, but it's becoming creative and establishing that trust with yourself that, okay, I can have pizza Friday night because I literally do have pizza Friday night and I'm still going to be healthy and fine. Um, I can go a day without seeing a vegetable because you know what? I just need a quick grab on the go, but that's okay because I know my nutrition is automatic and here's how it is, you know? So it's developing those habits and understanding that, okay, I need this, this, and this to eat, to feel good and full. Um, and it's recognizing that different portions need to be there. Um, I look at um, keeping things consistent. So I want to know what for breakfasts you enjoy, what for lunches, what for dinners, what snacks you enjoy. And then how do we create just a, a consistent um, um, 
just lost the word, um, <laughs> a repeatable uh, system for you so that you can easily maintain it on those weeks where it is really, really matic and you can have less of those days where it's drive-through, um, grabbing some, uh, grab and go at a local convenience store um, or just skipping a meal. Don't skip a meal, eat. <laughs> and a protein shake is not a meal. It's a buffer to get you to something to eat. Um, so those are big proponents. And supplementation is tricky. Every person needs a different supplementation. I think it's good. Um, but that is something where, you know, we really need to look at blood work with that to see where you might be in deficit with it. Um, and I do work, even though, I am certified in nutrition. I do work with registered dietitians because they have over a thousand hours worth of clinical work and can decode that better than I can. So that's where with supplementation, I'm like, go see the dietitians that I work with because I can help with a lot of stuff, but they're going to be able to order the blood um, uh, panels that you need. They're going to be able to decode it and then they're going to be able to do more work than I can. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's great. And I think what you've said is actually very re refreshing and relaxed, which I love because it can feel so stressful to try to get the nutrition right. And you hear this like keto and no carbs and low carb and now we're doing paleo and now we're doing and it's just a lot to keep track of. And I think, you know, it's important too to listen to what your body needs. Like I love certain vegetables. My husband doesn't like certain vegetables. He loves different things. And it's it's like our we have to listen to what our bodies are saying and craving sometimes. I think those mm -hmm. cravings can be important and like not to go eat chocolate cake, but maybe they're saying you I've been on vacation sometimes and come back and be like, I'm really craving some quality vegetables. Like I didn't eat enough vegetables on that trip and now I'm craving some. So I think it's just interesting to pay attention to like what your body needs. Cause I, I don't know, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it starts to tell you what you might be missing. It, it, it definitely does. And, and that's where it's just being aware of, of, like you said, what your body is telling you it needs. Um, and, and that's where I get kind of, go bonkers over like the rules. Don't eat after 6 p.m. Don't eat after 8 p.m. If you're really, really hungry, you need to eat something. But let's be intentional with what we choose to eat. Um, and, and the other thing I'll say this, just one piece about nutrition that comes up a lot with my clients is, is oh, I shouldn't eat out. I should only work, you know, cook from home. That's healthier. Sometimes, yes, you need to eat out. But if, you know, I have one client where eating out is what, they need and it works with their their family so from that it's like okay well eating out now is no longer a treat it's the way you eat so now let's look at where you frequent and find more nutrient dense choices there um so that's where just the eating out piece does get skewed that every time we eat out it should be a treat and i'm gonna get whatever i want um yes that's great but if it is more of a norm and a consistency than looking at it needs to adapt to, to your nutritional needs. When you think about like, did you mention goals and someone has a particular health goal or something they're trying to achieve in their health? Like, what is it for you that you, how do you define health? How does <laughs> someone know, right? And they have, how they feel that they are healthy. Is it because of what they do or more so how they feel and how does that feel? How, does, how do you define that? That's a really, really great question. So I asked clients a uh, question. So I say, you know, think back to a time where you felt just completely, you know, powerful, strong, confident, just, you know, that dream feeling. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what, you know, tell me it all. Like describe, like, you know, where you going out with friends every you know Saturday night were you working out at the gym six times like what workouts what were what was everything that you were doing then tell me kind of you know in a year from now how do you want to feel what do you want to do and cuz i want to know the deeper feelings of my clients cuz i can write a, an amazing workout but oftentimes you know, health is one of those weird things where it's different for every person. Fitness is different for every person. There's no, like, you must be a bodybuilder and that's your epitome of, of fitness. You know, there's no perfect number on that scale that is, well, you hit that, boom, you are 
you've won the lottery you are you know the fitness success there there's no look there's no fit there's no feel but it's so unique to yourself and the more you can decode on what you were doing at those times those feelings and i want to know because we all have that number in our head we all have that number on that scale that we're like i want to get back there or i want to stay there why do we want to stay there because it's more about the lifestyle the movement the feeling of that it's not always about the number and if i can understand that about a client i can start to develop steps in obtainable habits for them to get there and explain to them like hey you know what you can obtain anything you know if you want the you know cut body the six pack abs okay well here's what it's going to take can you accommodate that in your life sometimes it's no and then it's like okay well here's how we can get there so yes that's huge dream big you know i really think everyone can obtain huge goals but maybe the season of life that you're currently in or you know the way your life is constructed may not accommodate that but here's how we can keep working towards that goal and maybe stretch it out to a five-year plan not a six month or a one-year plan because again we're so trained because like you mentioned earlier sarah we see something on tv and it's like 30 days drop 40 pounds and you're like whoa okay i'm on it and then you're like i can't do it um but maybe we need to just we can do it one i believe anybody can obtain any goal they set their mind to and two it's just looking at the plan maybe it needs to go from here and just extend it a little longer and that's okay you're not failing because you're the only unique person out there nobody else is you nobody else has these goals nobody else has your lifestyle so therefore you have nothing to compare it to it's not always easy not to compare yourself but if you trust the process and stay focused on those steps you're going to achieve those goals can i ask you a follow-up question on that real quick um sure. So, uh, cause like that, that's pro probably like, um, uh, for instance, like I have some personal goals for myself right now and that's how they're setting it. As, as you were saying that, like, I was like, oh, maybe I should re reassess that. Um, what, uh, like how, how do you think if somebody's, if somebody's like overarching goal is like, they're focused on like longevity and just overall like heart health and just like, you know what I mean? Good immune system and stuff like that. Like how should they frame they're like, um, like what? I don't even know how to ask this question right. Um, I guess I'm saying if you're taking away things like, oh, I'm trying to hit this weight or I'm trying to do this thing, how should you? What's a better way? What are some better metrics or a better way to kind of like, I, I don't know, um, uh, like like set goals? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, taking away the scale and stuff like that, it, it, focusing on non-scale victories can almost feel ambiguous because it's like, well, again, it's we're looking at measurable goals and then now we're taking in and looking at non-measurable goals. Um, so with that, I look at, okay, with my clients, I have them record what weights they use or even um, a um, resistance band, what resistance is that at? And so um, with my clients, I tend to do a lot of uh, rep ranges. So it might be eight to 12. Um, a lot of reasoning behind that but what i would look at is your individual workouts that you're doing um maybe your ultimate goal is to work out five days a week but right now you need to start out with two days a week or a range of two to three so i would look at that okay for the next two weeks i'm going to focus on getting two workouts a week and this is what it's going to be and mark it down write it down because again in our minds we think oh i did it or oh we only we tend to focus on the negative so when there's a gap you know so let's say you work out tuesday thursday but then by saturday you're like i didn't even work out all this week you know so write it down when you have those um write down how you felt how strong you felt in those workouts um if you're you know in cardio sessions whatever that may be whether um it's on a cardio machine or out walking or, or even running look at the how you feel going into it how you feel finishing um you know what was your rate of perceived exertion um maybe the metrics on if you're using an elliptical or a rower or any sort of cardio machine what you were at at that time the other thing i will say with that is and this kind of gets nitty-gritty but don't get so obsessed with those numbers because it's okay to have variation in those numbers with it some days you're gonna 
maybe walk a little slower. Some days you're going to walk a little faster and that's okay. And that's all part of the plan. Nobody comes out and runs a PR or lifts a PR every single day. That doesn't happen. And not even on the elite status, that does not happen. So if you look at the consistency of feeling like, okay, I'm coming in and I feel great in this, or let's say you slept your sleep was on point for the last three days. You got solid eight hours of sleep. Your nutrition, you were like, man, I am hitting every, if you count macros or, or, or whatnot, I'm hitting every macro goal or portion guide goal. Um, but my workout's falling flat. Hmm, wonder why that is. And sometimes there's no explanation. Maybe there's a little stress going into it. So staying focused that there's not always going to be a perfect workout. I mean, there's probably out of every 10 workouts, there's only going to be two perfect workouts or feeling strong, but looking at, okay, how do I feel going into it? Am I able to do one more rep pass than I could do the, the, the um, workout before? Um, maybe, you know, if you do a typical walking path um, and there's a trail marker or um, a tree or, or whatever signage and you get to it 30 seconds faster, that's awesome. Celebrate that, recognize and celebrate those things. And the more you can look at those things that, aren't fixated on the scale or measurements, the more you're going to be um, intrinsically motivated to do that. Um, and that's why I have my clients look at, okay, well, you know, because they can get, and I look at it, well, look, you you hit your goal here. We, we did th you three workouts. That's the goal we're supposed to be at. You know, now looking at next week, you can take on a fourth one because, you know, you moved up. This is why I look at habit status and, and, and goal resiliency and just moving them up incrementally to the next level. Um, and they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. That seems so easy. Or you know what, that was challenging. I'm gonna stay right here because this is where I feel good at. Um, so uh, does that help? I know that's kind of- Yeah, yeah, no, no, it helps. Cause like the, yeah, the spirit of my question is, um, was essentially like you use the word ambiguous, you know what I mean? Like how, how do you set steps for yourself when you're, when you're looking for more like, it's almost like you're, you're trying to feel healthy and you're trying to like, when you go to the doctors and they look at you and you're like, Oh, great blood pressure. Your blood work looks good. Like that kind of thing versus like, yeah. Like versus how much do I weigh now versus two years ago or something like that. Yeah. Also look at your sleep, your um, intake of hydration. Those are other things, you know, if you're moving more, you're going to sleep better. Um, you're going to feel more awake when you wake up um, and those things. And if you're finding, and this is another thing I always ask clients is, you know, tell me about your sleep. Are you waking up and not feeling rested? Even if you're getting consistent sleep every day, or are you waking up and feeling like you can't get out of bed? Then we mm. need to look at that. That and that points to something where not immediately, but like I'm like, hey, we need to look at your sleep routine. Maybe you're waking up three or four times a night. Maybe there's another disturbance. Maybe that's where we need to, you know, get some blood tests done. All right, refer out, you know. So look at the whole picture we also with our fitness we tend to be like okay the 30 minutes the 40 minutes that we're in the gym or the 20 30 minute 40 minute cardio session we only look at that as a, a micro aspect but everything works together in a 24 hour seven day week 365 you know year it all works together and one of the things especially coming out of this pandemic with the stress and the amount of change we've been under it takes a long time for the body to adapt so one night of sleep and i say this to all my new moms that glorious moment when your baby sleeps eight hours and you get eight hours of sleep does not undo the six months the seven months mm. the year of sleep one full week two full weeks does not undo that time it's not like whoop, eight hours boom i'm good to go it takes time for the body to adapt and adjust um speaking on my from my own personal personal perspective um i had found out that i had a severe d vitamin d deficiency um and whatever brought that on who knows um uh, but it took me three years of working on things to finally feel really really good um mm. so vitamin d deficient but it took me three years of looking at okay let me evaluate my sleep let me evaluate my training let me change things and understand now it wasn't all at once i had to take one thing and work at it for a good three to six months and then see okay well that's that's feeling good but i'm still feeling this and keep building up um so we tend to lose sight that oh it didn't work for 30 days this is ridiculous i can't i'm not seeing results let me change it all up you know it takes time we don't change 
overnight. Our bodies take time and we need to be a little bit more compassionate with that and look a little bit. That's why I always say a trainer is really good for that because we can be like, hey, okay, but you know what? Over here is where, you know, this might have caused this or ask those investigative questions to really decode the situation to help you. And I say trainers are more of a delegation of your health and I help manage people's health and, and give them that resiliency where if a client has a 40 more minute workout on on hand and and they they message me and they're like i don't have 40 minutes today i'm like here you go here's 10 minutes do this you're gonna it's you're gonna be rocking mm -hmm. with this and you're gonna feel good doing it so i and i think you really led into one of the other questions we wanted to wrap up with is what can people expect from working with you from working with a trainer and then maybe you can also let us you know listeners know how can they connect with you yeah absolutely so one of the things i say with a trainer is we're not all cre created equal and i especially in my consultation process i look at okay am i the right fit for you are you going to be comfortable with me working with you because we need to have that trust process and i accept and i i fully like i said i'm not the right trainer for everyone um and what you need to do is what are you looking to what are your goals what are you looking to get out of do you need a trainer who specializes in chronic health issues um do you need a trainer who is you know, specialize in women's fitness, postpartum, prenatal, you know, uh, perimenopause, menopause? Do you need a trainer who specializes in um, uh, injuries or, um, um, I'm blanking on things, chronic, I don't think I said chronic mm -hmm. illnesses, but are, you know, those specialties are out there. So not every trainer is going to be able to design the right program specifically for you. So evaluate what you want in a trainer, why, and look at their credentials and, and interview them. Um, number two, a, a trainer that is going to meet you on your level. Design workouts and really listen to you to create a plan that is going to work for you, not a plan that you have to fully adapt. There's some adaptation, mm -hmm. but not a plan where you have to totally derail your life and it's like putting a square peg in a circle hole. It's just not going to fit. There's always going to be strife. Um, and, you know, a trainer where you feel that you're gonna feel good and comfortable that you can come to them and be like hey i messed up i missed my workout <laughs> all i ate yesterday was you know take out on candy but you know what it's all good and they can be like hey you know what it happens here's how we're gonna move on shame should not be in fitness shame should not be on it just does no you know we're human life is meant to be lived and enjoyed and you know that is just you feel good and confident and you can talk to that trainer about a lot um the way clients work with me um you know like i said since 2013 i've been training clients virtually um i do see uh, right now just a couple clients in person but the way clients work with me virtually is um i have a app that's custom created where um, all their workouts are on there they see videos of me doing the workouts they uh communicate with me it's like instant message or text message um all their health stuff is on there um and goals everything and then zoom coaching calls i, I work with um it, it's really an organic situation it's not always a workout sometimes it's like hey let's talk through these barriers let's get through let's really strategize plans so that you feel confident from next week that you know boom i've got it all under control i have a roadmap here and i can go on with you know maintaining my fitness so um and where people can find me um both handles are the same on instagram and facebook it's at catfit studios um is where you can find me on instagram and facebook and then my website is www.cat.fit it's KT. Oh, that's awesome. And I can vouch for your Instagram because it does feel like you're approachable, you're real, you're talking about real things and what, what real, you know, men and women are faced with. So I'll totally vouch for you there. It's been really cool to see your journey and to, to, to see this evolve over the past few months, certainly during the pandemic. And just really, it's empowering. Like, it's really cool because I know you're meeting people where they're at, which is, which mm -hmm. is an amazing thing. Um, so we always wrap up our episode episodes with what are we into right now? So um, Parshel and Tim, do either of you have anything? And then Kat, if you have anything to add, please, please do. What are we into right now? Um, pickleball. 
And I found um, some courts that are nearby and I'm like back into that now. So <laughs> I'm excited to get my paddle out and play again. If you haven't heard of it, it's like, it's like a mixture between like ping pong and tennis. And it's very fun and you know, you really do get moving. And it's one of those things where it's like you're moving your body, but you're having so much fun, you don't think about the fact that you're sweating a little bit. So it's one of those activities. So, and it falls in line with our topic today. So that's what yeah. I'm into. <laughs> those are the best. <laughs> Kat, anything you want to share? Um, I'm really into puppies. We just got a puppy on Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so he's been uh, it's a long time coming. So uh, he once he gets old enough, he'll be my future running partner. So <laughs> Perfect. What kind did you get? A German short haired pointer. Great. Excellent. Perfect. And I'm into any kind of dance workout. I love to dance. So if I can use dance as an excuse to work out and sweat a little bit, I always have, have fun doing that. And I recently discovered chia seed pudding, which I don't know where this has been all my life, but I really um, kind of accidentally ordered it at a restaurant this weekend. And I was like, this is really, this is really good. So I made my own for this morning for breakfast. So that's what I'm going to do right now in the health space. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, thanks for participating, Jack, especially. We always appreciate those comments from you. So you can catch us every Monday here at 2 p.m. Eastern, where we live stream. And also, you can catch us on your favorite podcast app. And also, just be sure to leave us an iTunes rating and review. So thank you so much, Kat, for joining us as our guest. Thank and thank you to my council members, uh, Tim and Parshall. And we will see everybody uh, not next week because it's Memorial Day. We're taking the week off. We will be back on June 7th. So we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.